Hi everyone. In this video, we're looking at adding IO to our CPU. So that's inputs and outputs, digitals or analogs, how we add them to our CPU. So once you've added a new device and you've added your PLC or CPU, um, you'll notice that we don't have anywhere to put our inputs and outputs from our field. So, or our instruments. So, um, if you come into the hardware catalog from the device view, so we're in the device view now, and you select DI for digital inputs, you can see here uh, lots of different um, digital inputs that are available with this CPU. So we're just gonna go ahead and pick this one here, and you can refer to the documentation um, for each of these to find out what the specific differences are. Some of them are high frequency, some of them are 64 um, channel rather than 32 or 16. Um, they are in the name here as well. So this one's a 16 way 24 volt um, digital input card. But if we go ahead and drag this one in, you can see it simply appears and then all of its uh, properties appear down here. And if I go ahead and add an analog input as well. And then we'll go ahead and add a digital output. So that's my system there. So at the moment I have 16 digital inputs, 16 analog inputs and eight digital outputs. That is my system. So Tier Portal does a great job at um, sort of getting all of that ready with the basics. So if you want to go in and change the way your cards are working, let me just make that a bit bigger. Simply click on it and down here you have things such as your input configuration. So what happens if you have a module failure? If I click there, I get all of them rather. So you have your module failure, where your input addresses are being mapped to. And we'll come on to that in a separate video, but at the moment, the first one's starting at zero and ending at 1.7, which gives us 16 bits to work with. Um, and all of the cards have a similar sort of configuration that you can change that. So this is our analog input. And if we come down here, we can see that there's a lot more options for analogs. Let me just make this a little bit bigger and we'll come down to IO addresses. We can see that this one's starting at two and ending at 33. And uh, this is just talking about mapping our information into the memory addresses. So our PLC can actually access that information. And again, when it comes to outputs, we have the same setup again. I'll make that a little bit bigger and come down here that this one's starting at zero and ending at 0.7 which you'll notice is the same as the digital input, but digital input is using I for input and digital output is using Q for output. So Siemens have always used I for inputs and Q for outputs. Some of the PLCs might use O for outputs, but uh, Siemens uses Q. So let's have a look at some of the other things that we can do um, with these module parameters. So if you come here and have a look at the uh, digital input configuration, this particular model doesn't really have a lot that we can do. Um, we can get some quality information uh, if this one allows us to have it turned on, which it doesn't for some reason. But um, you do get some configuration around uh, your inputs and outputs usually. Um, it looks like this one just has the module failure options. Uh, what do you do when this module fails? So you can either keep the last known value or set your input value as false. So if we have a look at the configuration for outputs, um, there's a little bit more going on in terms of what you can set. So this particular one here, startup, comparison preset to actual module. All this is doing is making sure that we're happy that the correct type of output card has been installed compared to our tier portal program. And all we're doing is saying, Startup uh, CPU only if compatible, startup CPU even if there's a mismatch, or from the CPU. And if you have a look at the help file on this, it gives you a little bit more information as to what these mean. So from the CPU, the setting for startup in the properties of the CPU is applied. And right now the default is start. So 
that's just saying that we'll do whatever the CPU is being told to do if we have a mismatch in our output configuration. And then down here is the bit that you would probably need to sort of change depending on your application. So this is things like um, our output use uh, templates. So apply all channels that use the template. So right now we're not having any diagnostics and we're not detecting a short circuit ground. If a CPU stops, or if the CPU stops or is set to stop, then we should shut down. But we can say keep the last known value or substitute the value. Um, if you choose substitute the value to one, then it's going to output true when um, when the CPU is stopped. Keep last value or keep whatever the last value is. Shut down will set it to false and not allow any output. And then we have what we had on the input, which is the value status quality information. Um, and any PWMs if we if this output has PWM. So if we have a look at the um, channel template, which uh, suggests that we can set this for individual ones. So if if we have a look at outputs 0 to 7 here, we can see that we have diagnostics overview, parameter settings from template, or you can go ahead and set it manually. So we could say we only want to detect a short circuit to ground on channel zero, but for the rest of them, we're not interested in doing that. Um, it's not very common to do that. You know, you usually set your template and that applies to the whole card. It's not very often that people have mixed signals and stuff like that, but it can happen. It's useful to know it's there. Um, so you've got your diagnostics overview and then you've got your overview of output parameters, which is the same as what we looked at earlier, but instead of from the template, again, you can do the same thing and say just channel zero. We want to set it to manual and we want this one actually to uh, keep its last known value, even in the event of the CPU going off or shutting down. And uh, knowing that that information is there or that um, parameter setting is there can be useful for situations where you're working with something that you can't just de-energize because of where it is in the program you need to make sure that you keep the last value uh, if you can um, because it's safer to do that so let's have a look at analog inputs and the configuration around those again it's very similar we have our module parameters the startup configuration a channel template where we can set overflow underflow wire breaks various other things but the key thing with um, analog cards is that you have the ability to change what your measurement type is. So at the moment, the default is four wire transducer. And on this particular card, we can set 0 to 20, 4 to 20, or positive, negative 20 milliamps as the range that we're detecting. You also have the ability to do some um, damping or smoothing, um, weak, medium, or strong. And all that does is try to smooth out any um, sort of jumping of the signal. Uh, you also have down here what we had on the other modules in terms of uh, value status for quality information and things like that. So if we go to the configuration overview in here, we get our diagnostics parameter from template or manual like we did on the other cards. And we also get the same thing for our input parameters. So again, I'm able to say I don't want this particular channel to come from the template. I want this one to be different and be 0 to 20 milliamps and leave all the other ones as 4 to 20. One of the things with analog inputs is to remember that if you're not using it and you have things like wire break turned on or the diagnostics turned on, that you should come into here and uh, put, it, put it in manual and then set the measurement type to disabled. Um, otherwise, you're going to find that all deactivated. Otherwise, you're going to find that your card is throwing errors saying that you've got an open loop or a, uh, a low milliamp reading because you've got nothing connected to it. So all of the uh, cards are set up very similarly, um, and that takes part, uh, care of the hardware side of things. So once you've come in and set this stuff up, you're ready to get your PLC reading from them. Um, and we'll cover that in the next video.